Check, check, Clive. Good. Yeah, good. good. Welcome back to the During Business Hours podcast with me, Eric, and Christopher over there. What's up? Uh, today, we were going to be talking about business margins, uh, what Chris calls the race to the bottom, and having to... It's more than just parts and parts and labor. There's a lot of other costs you got to consider with your margins. The problem is a lot of first time people trying to open a business or start their hustle transfer, as I like to call it. Um, you know, hey, this can really make some money. Let's let's turn this into a business. That's the uh, nobody ever figures out their margins day one. You, you know what your costs are, but you don't have a percentage for your margins. So when I, when I was starting out, everything was eBay and Amazon. Could, didn't have wholesalers. So I knew that $20 was a part. I knew that I charged people $20 for labor. Didn't have taxes. Didn't have anything figured out. But when I got into business and started doing the same labor to cost analysis, I was like, that's not sus- sustainable whatsoever. I'm not making enough. My margins went down to like 20% profit. So I had 80% margin of cost. Because you didn't really know how to price everything out appropriately to accommodate for all that. So when I had started, it was real rough. You'd have times where you eat your own cost or get eaten by the, the part. If you had to order a second one, you didn't adjust for any cost or slippage or price adjustments or tax hikes. So I was just looking at a picture of a business card of mine from seven years ago. I got a shout out from a friend. Take a look at this. So seven years ago, when I was out at Roseville, buddy of mine, that's hilarious. I thought it was real funny. Seven years today. Well, I think it's seven years in April, but seven year go- years ago today he had posted that. It just reminded me of like when I bought those business cards, how much it cost me to buy those. It was like 200 bucks, and I thought it was a big investment. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, 20000 is a big investment. <laughs> a lot, lots can change in 20 yeah, years. Change over time. Scales with the business. Sometimes it scales too much. Well, I, I understand that, but you got to adjust with that. The uh, The margins in the business, though, when I started, it was trying to double whatever the cost was. So you would spend $20, but you would earn $20, so the, the double method. Uh, I had seen somewhere that if you doubled your money every year for nine years, you have from a 1000 to a $1 million, and then from a $1 million to a $1 billion. So the math was there. And I was like, well, if I can do that with every repair, then I can do nine repairs, double my bank account. Do nine more repairs, double my bank account. That's the plan. <clears throat> but then the problem was I was thinking, oh, yeah, you're just going to double your money. But I didn't think of the mathematics of it. I wasn't doubling my income. Mm-mm. By that, then I'd have to do nine to the ninth power. So I'd have to do 91 repairs from the first at, repair at that very at that pricing by that math because mm-hmm. it didn't account for all the other variables it exactly it was a whole thing but i was stupid i was young and i was just trying to save people a buck and then i started buying more equipment started buying uh advertising once i got a brick and mortar store instead of just passing out flyers and doing the word of mouth stuff it was incomprehensible how stupid i was starting this out and a lot of people are going to be just as stupid it's it's not as simple as just passing out cards, getting advice from your friends or your family. It's uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of pitfalls. And then, you know, so you, you up your margins from, say, take 20, give 20. And then you go to, I need this part to be added 15% just in case of that slippage. So you're to 20, you go up to, what is that, 22 $23. Mm-hmm. And then so you're charging $23 plus tax on your part. You got your labor, which is tax-free. And then you add your markup on your labor after seven years of work and, and knowledge. So say eight years now, along with all my teams. So 
Right now, I think we charge 69 an hour. So we've tripled that in seven years, but we're taking in, you know, from then was like 20 repairs a month. Now it's like 400 repairs a month minimum on a bad month. It's like a slow, I was going to say slow month. But you got a lot of these guys that are out there doing, you know, Amazon screens or China screens. They're paying $100 for a screen. And they think that because they're charging 120 bucks that they're making a killing, getting a lot more volume and repairs. <sighs> the problem is that they're not getting a lot more volume. They're getting a lot more problems. So they're getting any RMA. They're never going to call you again. Mm-hmm. And the ones that do, they're not going to take a loss. They're going to give you it's an gonna excuse. Be, it's all going to be a big fight, an excuse, a problem mm-hmm. with the warranty. A uh, cool thing with our suppliers, how not lax, but all the things that their their warranty and their RMA process will cover. Mm-hmm. Little they now cover minor errors, which is cool. Crimp a little cable, they'll swap it out. You know, they'll fix on there and whatever. That's their customer appreciation to us. That passes on to our customers. You know, everybody gets a little bit more care, um, attention, customer service. It's a lot more comfortable to come into a shop with a problem, and they go. Oh, that's this problem. Uh, that's accidental, but but we got you. That's covered. Exactly. You also have a lot more freedom when you start raising raising your margins because you can allow for a lot less errors. I'm gonna edit this real quick. Getting a lot of feedback there. You got so say if I'm making sixty dollars on a repair, it's easier for me as a business owner to say, hey, I have a lot more room for loss or slippage or, you know, tech damage. Now, if you get repetitive tech damage, then that's a bigger problem. So say somebody does like a Microsoft Surface 7, a battery. Well, (coughs) problem is these mics right now are super. (laughs) So sensitive. So sensitive, it's got me breathing. That's why I turned my face to the side. I got some taze on day up in here. Lean away from the mic to breathe. Is that good? I still breathing. It's so weird. Why is it so loud? You have the windscreen and everything on there, too. Then again, our mic levels, or our headphone levels, are pretty high. So we're not peaking on there, which is good. What was I saying? So if somebody buys a, uh, say, a Surface... The Surface 7. Yeah, a Surface 7. Battery for yeah, bat- battery for a Surface 7. Somebody comes in, <coughs> wants to get one done. We charge 129 so the battery's probably 40 50 bucks. The labor to get into that one is going to be somewhere 70 to 80 bucks because it's almost an hour and a half. Now, back in the day, I would have done it 25 bucks. You brought me the battery. Or I've ordered the battery for you, tacked $5 on for shipping. Yeah. Nowadays, I know that the value of time is more. So your margins are going to change along with every bit of your standard for your parts and where you're getting them, the cost analysis. The problem's going to be the people who... Whether you're in the restaurant business and you buy five dollars for noodles, and you know you get your one pound, you get mm-hmm. your spices is another five dollars. You get all your meats is another five dollars. You got fifteen dollars in cost. The prep work you got to add a value to. That's labor. So you got your plate can't just be five dollars, and then putting out thirty plates a day, and you're assuming that that one fifty is all profit. And you get a lot of people like that where they're doing all this work and they're assuming I made a thousand dollars today. All of that is profit. You know, we make twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a day. I look at it like that rule of fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. We're probably in the fifty percent profit margin, not on accessories, things like that is like ninety percent. But the option is <sighs> it's got me breathing real weird. <laughs> <laughs> because you're self conscious about it now. Yeah. It's got you in the uh the mode to overthink and then overspend. So the problem being that most people will take that, you know, $2,500 a day because they work so hard and then they'll blow it out 
instantly and they're like, Oh, you know, I got more, I got more supplies and I can sell more stuff. But investing that 2,500 back into the business would be easier for some people, harder for most, and then dumber for <laughs> the majority. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't just claim you're investing it back into the business. You gotta be, there has to be a clear plan. You have to have constant reminders to yourself. What are you going to invest in, et cetera, you know, make the right choices. But when they, the talk of spending or cost analysis happens, and that happens often here because even the other day when you spent a thousand bucks, I'm like, what are you buying? I want to know. Mm -hmm. I saw a big, you know, large transaction detected yeah. on my true bill. And, uh, it's not our average spend on a day, but, uh, I guess we were running low on some things. And I was like, oh, you know, order me two of each of these tapes because in passing I was upset about the tapes. So, Oh, I got the tape. <laughs> I know. We got a whole box of it today. So we also got that 11 Pro Max in stock for that lady. The Chris. The problem is when you're starting out, like I was saying, there's so much, so much you're not looking at. You're not caring about. And when you get into it, then you're confused or overwhelmed like I was. I had no idea how to run a business when I started this. It was a complete hobby and I wasn't, I went to school for business at Healed. Didn't learn much. It was more GED stuff and like four business classes a year. Mm -hmm. Got a degree for it. Don't even care. I have no, don't remember shit. Most of the time I was high anyway. But the, most of the planning strategies for how to make money in a business it goes hand in hand for your margins because your margins control everything. So lowering your margins by getting suppliers and then upping your labor to lower your cost margins is good. But there's quite a bit of strategies. I found a website, you know, that's helpful on certain other topics anyway. And it says how to increase your profit margins. 11 strategies to improve profitability. Yeah. Right on the nail on the head, right? Yeah. So what is the average profit margin in retail? So in America, the average profit margin is 53.46%. That's crazy, in my opinion. A study of 13,000 retailers found that the average gross profit margin in retail is 53.33%, comparing the data across regions. They didn't find a lot of variances in profit margins. Now, through New Zealand, takes the lead with 52.92 margins. Now, I find that to be insane considering the profit margins in our business. Back then it was 50-50 because I didn't know what to charge. Didn't mm -hmm. know that you could have suppliers and things like that. I thought everything was eBay and Amazon. Nowadays, I'm spending $30 on a screen but charging $120. So that's an 80% profit margin. A lot better than the average. We're also not retail even though we're moving in a retail kind of direction in the uk it's 52.48 percent new zealand 52.92 australia 52.43 south africa 46.16 profit margin that's scary so when you go to different uh Categories. Meanwhile, alcoholic beverages, sporting goods stores, and electronics had some of the lowest profit margins with 35.64 to 43.29, respectively. What's a good profit margin in retail, they ask? Well, let's go back up because it says here electronics was 43.29% profit margin in 2020. I call bullshit. <laughs> now, on sealed goods, profit margin possibly. You know, we were reselling quite a bit of things. Mm -hmm. We'd make 50% on our money. So we'd buy for 1000 sell for 1500 But then you had times when you buy used for 100 and it turns out it's worth 2000 unknowingly. You thought it's a busted tablet. Turns yeah. out it's a Z Zenith T8X1. The Zenith Art Pro, yeah. Mm -hmm. And people just want quick money. As long as it's not stolen, we'll buy it. But apparently... The highest grossing profit margins in 2020 was sporting goods stores above industry average at 50%, <coughs> which is odd to me because weren't they all shut down for majority of the year? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were closed. I don't, I don't think months. they were essential. 
I know Big Five was, and that's a sporting goods store. The ones that they sell, sell guns. workout <coughs> equipment and guns, which are for home defense and health. Therefore, es- essential. I bet you that was the angle. Probably. Trapped at home? Get a treadmill. Got a treadmill. Need running shoes. So apparently, even retail automotive is 6.3 profit margin. Retail is 12.9%. Distributor is 7.7. General is 4.63. Retail grocery food and beverage is 3.48. Retail online is almost 6%. Retail space uh, special lanes or special lines is only 3%. <coughs> so it says, and I agree with this wholeheartedly, avoid markdowns by improving inventory visibility. We did this early 2020 after the burglary. And so we took out all the old cases that were sealed off. We The old cabinets were all busted up. And that highly increased the profit margins and sales capabilities of most of the accessories. And we went from selling a case a week to five, six cases a day. All the screen protectors. Now we can demonstrate a lot of the screen stuff. All the accessories that are on display. So I... I, I agree with that completely the fun part that uh, I never did because back in the day I was working out of my house I never sold accessories but I did get my hands on some throw outs from Metro PCS and sold them on eBay every once in a while those things were a killer they're discards yeah they're discards so I got 12 boxes of like 30 each and so I had 3,000 cases sitting in my house and it was a I built a coffee table at them one time but the other tip that I also agree with on this elevate your brand and increase the perceived value of your merchandise the way I never did I didn't have a website that was built by somebody or invested in nowadays we have a team that makes our websites edits things we have our IQW or instant quoting widget a lot of people are starting to use we've been with them for a while now and that that greatly helped increase the brand awareness and what we do, how we offer our services. And I recommend that people do that as well. Build your website, whether you're building a Google, your Yelp, your whatever you want people to land on, you have to build. You got to make it look good. Constant posting, content, etc. But with that, we ended up we hold ourselves above quite a few of the the local people, so Yeah. We tend to hold our prices above theirs as well. We're not going to race to the bottom like a lot of the people do around here. And so we tend not to price match. We don't know what you're using. We don't know what you're... This price match is difficult because of the variety of suppliers, the quality of work, the guarantees they offer. Someone doing a $45 iPhone 7 repair is going to be different from the 69 we do, a non-special, because we have the, the guarantees, the 90-day warranty, uh, the upfront open And we honesty. say 90 days. I'll replace that shit up to a year if you're not coming at me sideways. The, the people know. who come in and level with us and they're like, I dropped my phone. I blew it up. You did good last time. Can you cut me a deal? Re- return customer discount. That's the worst case scenario. Much simpler to deal with than the craziest. I dropped this once on the carpet. This was sitting you... on my bedside table. Oh, man. It's, it's always something very simple that shouldn't have broke. And it's your defective part that I've had on here for a year. And it was never having no problems until I dropped it on the carpet. What do you mean? That's where that's where it gets funny. Once the phone is broken, even after we've repaired it, it's a phone that is broken before, and it is still delicate glass filled with electronics. It is still a precision instrument, not made to be dropped ever. Yeah. With that in mind, you know we're now selling uh, carpeted cases, just in case you want to blame the carpet. Carpet Anywhere you cases. drop it. Yeah, it's always the carpet. Only, only landed on carpet. Exactly. The uh, the thing I found not as agreeable on this <coughs> is streamline your operations and reduce operating expenses. You can only streamline certain activities so much. This, this website seems to tell you that you can always do better. And I understand if you want to be robotic about things, you can always do better. But you cannot make something... Rep- repetitive to 
a degree that it's timed. Like an iPhone 6 should take an average of like 15 to 20 minutes if you're a decent tech. I can't say that every single time you're going to take 15 to 20 minutes. There's different variables. variables. Are you hopping on phone? Are you, you know, did he come in a little sick that day? Well, yeah, you, not even that, but like, but is it water damage? Is the battery expanded? You got to stop to call the customer. Is it how much cleaning? Is the part defective? Are, are any other cameras working? Is exactly. the home, but there's are too many things you got to do. Your 15 checklist, or yeah. you're going to do it pre, you're going to do the post. Oh, you forgot the post. You got to go back and do it. So on and so forth. I understand that changing or retraining people is very delicate in the uh, industry. You know, people are like, well, if you have your good SOPs and get everyone trained on time, it's going to be better. You cannot have somebody at 100% 24-7. Mm -hmm. Best employees in the world are never 100% 24-7. And people who say that don't sympathize with their employees. So that's where it, uh, it gets gets on a different level like you're robotic if you think that that can just be maintained all the time every day every hour every minute of every day it's and the it, more corporate outlook on this kind of business <laughs> you can't be corporate here you got the cprs the e-brake i fixes and they're doing great but they're also the same stupid corporations that put them a block away from each other and then you got the store owners fighting each other yep too often and it's horrible they're just on either side of the highway but they're no no on the same street a no. block away yeah do you see Tushan? i haven't seen his location though in lancaster pennsylvania or Vir i don't know lancaster virginia i think they put a cpr down from his cpr one block same road is one franchise one he's the fifth or? in the nation for his store brand the top of the top in my opinion doing great work mm -hmm. And they put some new shitty store owner five, five steps away from his store. Why? They want to wash down his experience? Well, there's so much business in this area. They could capitalize on the customers by that's putting in a second location. Like. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Take his customers, smear his brand. You know how many people are going to confuse him with somebody else? How many people are going to go to the either or and then go complain to the opposite? Or try and get, oh, you know, I bought it from this one. Can I return it here? No, ma'am, sorry. We're, we're corporate, but we're franchised, so I yeah. can't exchange, yada, yada. Now they come up with an agreement, or shit, even Tushan could train his guys if he was nice enough for free. Try and get them on the same level. Maybe he buys into it. Maybe he makes them so bad that they just want to sell and they leave. But that storefront is not going to do well for him or vice versa. Mm -mm. We've had a lot of people that popped up in the past. We had a Boost Mobile right next door for a while. 2016 Christmas. He didn't make it to 2017 Christmas. <laughs> I tried to help him. He wanted to do repairs. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll charge you 1500 bucks. I'll come out. And I'll show two of your guys four hours a day for five days. It's a pretty decent rate going. At the time, people were charging like $3,000, $4,000 for 20 hours. Yeah. I was like, well, we can make a certificate. You can put it up in your store, yada, yada. And at that time, I had well over 500 hours training other people, doing all the glass, the refurbs, etc. And then uh, he just spit in my face, said, get the fuck out of my store. I was like, you called me. Okay. Didn't like the price. He was an old Indian gentleman. And uh, I think it was June that year. He started closing up shop, only doing the, the service center type thing. He owned... 10 other boost mobiles so why not but he got no no foot traffic he was right next to a labu and the uh what is it labu and the halal pizza that's there oh, little smoke the shop labu smoke shop the uh, dry clear has gone yeah. now but they were there for the years time. they used to do all our uniforms when we wore them mm -hmm. but funny enough uh so when he ends up leaving he offers me all of his equipment and so i got it for pennies on the dollar thank you but it was my first shit post on, I think, the Facebook groups where I was like, man, I felt so good. We beat them. And then the next year, found out that we beat you break I fix and sales and things like that. But yeah. that was uh, a different story. But it's all thanks to growing the margins with growing your business, whether it's your profit margins or your cost margins decreasing. You never want it the opposite way around where your profit is decreasing, cost is increasing. Whether you're taking on new people or not, you better have work for those new people. So, I think that's going to be it for the day. In the business. Yep. All right. Y'all have a great day. Yeah.